If Bruce Wayne wants to continue his journey of self-discovery and self-mastery, he will need to learn to be someone else. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Batman the Night, issue number five, and find out together, shall we? So then, as we join the story, Bruce Wayne and his new ninja buddy Anton are in a Russian prison. It seems that they staked out a Kremlin government building in hopes of making contact with a famous ex-KGB spy named Avery. Obviously, these two foreigners poking around quickly got themselves a arrested under suspicion of being spies themselves. Both men are tough and are able to take the extrajudicial beatings just fine. However, things change for Bruce when the commandant running the prison threatens the life of Alfred. Bruce actually cries himself to sleep that night for the first time, thinking to himself that maybe this one-minded crusade to end crime and criminality may actually hurt people who aren't just him. This bit of introspection will need to be put on the back burner, though, as that very same night, the cells that Bruce and Anne Anton are staying in just so happen to open, giving them the chance they need to escape. Obviously, they're not dumb and know this has to be some sort of trap, but at the same time, they can either sit and rot in their cells or take this opportunity to look the devil in the eye. Bruce and Anton make their way past the crooked Russian cops up to the roof where they realize that the Commandant was actually never really the Commandant at all, but instead, Avery in disguise. That's right, everyone. Avery isn't just a legendary spy, but she's also a master of disguise of such unparalleled talent, she's able to actually live multiple separate lives at once. Naturally, learning skills like this could only be a major boon for the man who would be Batman, so Bruce and Anton decide to stay with Avery so they can learn to be masters of disguise, masters of disguise, masters of disguise. And don't worry, I promise that will be my last attempt at making a Masters of Disguise movie reference because I get the feeling if you're under the age of, oh geez, I don't know, 20? These Dana Carvey references probably go right over your head, and rightly so. Avery wastes absolutely no time getting Bruce and Anton started, even taking them to her inner sanctum, something that she says is very important for someone who lives multiple lives at once. Basically, it's a proto-Batcave. She also outs Bruce to Anton as being the famous Bruce Wayne. Up until now, Anton still thought he was going by the assumed name Jack. She did this because deep down, Avery assumes that rich, pampered people like Bruce will never be able to be true masters of disguise it's hard to understand what other people want when you've always had everything. Bruce defies this reading of his person, saying that, well, on the outside it may look like he has everything, the things he truly wants, the things that always drive him are internal and things that he's still after. This speech proves to be good enough to put Bruce and Anton to work right away. Small stuff at first, trying to get inside the best clubs and hottest nice spots in Russia. The idea being that being a master of disguise is a lot more than just wigs and latex makeup, that it's really a magic trick. It's about selling yourself, reading people, finding out what others want, and then turning yourself into that something to get what you ultimately want. And you know what? In a surprising twist, Bruce actually proves to be pretty bad at this. He has a hard time inhabiting other people because, well, he so ran away from the person that he was. This is some really clever writing and insight from Chip Zdarsky, too, because we know in the future that Batman's greatest his character, his greatest disguise is basically Bruce Wayne himself. But that it took Bruce very many years to find that out about himself and to create the Bruce Wayne construct that the rest of Gotham would end up coming to know. Now Avery's second test actually ratchets up the danger quite a bit. Bruce and Anton will need to get two Metropolis tourists off on drug charges from the Russian police. Bruce tries to play the apologetic American but ends up completely screwing things up almost instantly. Luckily, Anton manages to get him out of this problem because A, he speaks Russian, and B, he already knew that these cops were corrupt and the easiest way to get those other two tourists off was with a good old-fashioned bribe. Again, showing that while Bruce may very well hate his own status and money that he came from, at the end of the day, money really does make the world go round. This scene also reminds us of Anton's own duplicitous nature and how he's not above doing the dirtiest tactic possible if it gets him what he wants. Now, for Avery's final test, Bruce and Anton are going to have to infiltrate a Russian consulate party. A bunch of Hollywood types are coming there to celebrate the production of new movies in the area. At this party will also be an important log book wherein the Russian military keeps tabs on all of their safe houses. Bruce and Anton will both work a different general, and whoever gets the book first will be declared the winner. Bruce goes in under the fake name of Tom, the son of a big power producer in 
now. Hey, also, hey, with that little mustache, doesn't he look like Tony Stark? His plan was to try and ingratiate himself to one of these generals' wives, but unfortunately, once again, Bruce just can't seem to get the job done. He just cannot become another person, no matter how hard he tries. Anton's plot, however, was much more direct. He decided to seduce the general and take him back up to the office to try and bang him. Oh, so he's the bard in every D&D campaign I've ever played, huh? Oh, you know, respect. Bruce uses his kung fu skills to assist in Anton's escape by making it look like one of the warmongering military guys suffered a heart attack. This ends up backfiring and the entire building ends up going on a high alert. Not that Bruce seems to care all that much because now he's actually able to do something he is good at and that is fighting. Many thrown fists and broken teeth later, Bruce and Anton manage to escape to the rendezvous point where they're supposed to meet Avery. Bruce laments that the better man won this competition and maybe he isn't meant to be this master of disguise after all, but that he fears returning to Gotham City as a failure. Anton is sympathetic to Bruce, saying that maybe one person shouldn't be a master of absolutely everything under the sun. Maybe the goal is to take what works for you and make it your own. He also gets quite close to Bruce too, and it looks like he may have even attempted to go in for a kiss at one point when Avery ends up breaking up the whole scene. Avery is ready to declare Anton the winner, but wait, a twist, Bruce finally did learn to become someone else. He let himself appear vulnerable, let Anton in so he could steal the logbook from his jacket when he came in close. So yeah, Bruce wins the day, but he also sticks to his moral guns as well, destroying the book instead of giving it to Avery, not knowing what this ex-KGB spy could have planned for it. You'd think this sort of behavior would make Avery angry, but quite the opposite. She's proud of Bruce's gumption and now the fact that he's truly thinking like a spy, so much to the point that next time she's going to teach him all about masks. And so that was Batman the Night issue number five, everybody. And once again, I think we can all agree Chip Zdarsky knocked this one out of the friggin' park. The best thing the night as a series continues to do is really focus on the aspects of Batman's development that so often get ignored by other origin stories. In this case, this issue was all about identity. We can see the seeds planted in this story of how Bruce Wayne the Playboy would end up becoming just as an important a weapon in Batman's arsenal as his kung fu skills or his detective skills. It's also really refreshing to see Bruce Wayne, a character who is so often described as being a master of everything, really genuinely kind of fail in his early years as a disguise artist. It serves to make him feel more human and more relatable, something I think some Batman stories really grapple with. Anton is also becoming quite an interesting antagonist, too. We knew at the end of the last issue that he wasn't all he seemed to be, and this issue only continues to build upon that. In many ways, he's the anti-Bruce Wayne. He's all in on the training. He wants to become the very best at everything, but he seems to have no moral center. He's willing to do whatever it takes. Even if he has to lie, cheat, steal, or hurt people, it's all okay in the greater scheme of things. Where Bruce clearly doesn't want to lose himself on this adventure, and I think there's something very cool about that. Overall, I'd give this one another very positive 9 out of 10. The night continues to be awesome. Hey there everyone, Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time everyone, this has been Cape Jewel, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.